In the last few years, we've discussed quite a few incredible discoveries in biology that point us just a little bit closer to answering questions about the origins of life on planet Earth, and specifically trying to figure out how it all started, how it evolved, and how tiny primitive bacterial cells eventually became super complex organisms like us, containing trillions of cells working in unison. Now, some of these videos you can find in the description below, but today we're going to discuss a relatively recent discovery that actually focuses on something maybe a little bit different. The focus is on very unusual structures inside our cells that potentially present us with answers for the actual origin of life on planet Earth that started with very simple RNA molecules. The idea we sometimes refer to as the RNA world hypothesis. But before we talk about all of this, let's actually discuss what exactly these unusual structures are and why it's only really in the last two decades that we actually finally realized their importance. And so, how wonderful person. This is Anton. And in this video, we're going to discuss biomolecular condensates and their connection to the origins of life. But first, baby steps. So, here's a typical cell, and specifically, eukaryotic cell. And as you might have learned from biology classes, one of the main difference between bacteria or bacterial cells and eukaryotic cells, which is what we're made out of, is basically the presence of organelles, various structures covered by their own membranes responsible for individual functions. This is the famous mitochondria that's technically one of the most important organelles, responsible for the production of energy and basically the control of everything. But you can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. But in general, in the last few decades, and specifically as of 2022, researchers officially confirmed approximately a dozen individual membrane-bound organelles in a typical eukaryotic cell. Which basically means that inside the cell, there are these additional tiny cells, each with their own membrane and each with their own function. And that's, of course, what we usually learn in a typical biology class. But what we don't really learn is something that was discovered in just the last two decades. Apart from the dozen organelles covered by membranes, it turns out that there are also organelles not covered by membranes. In other words, they're known as membraneless compartments. Or individual microscopic compartments that seem to also contain various functions, but that don't actually have their own membranes that would differentiate them from one another or separate them from cytoplasm inside the cell. And originally they were actually discovered back in the 80s and kind of made no sense. Mostly because prior to this, it was always believed that a typical protein only functions when it acquires its own three-dimensional shape. In other words, when it came to proteins, their structure reveals their function. Once again, another video in the description talks about that as well. And so without its own shape, a protein is not supposed to have function. Yet years ago, researchers discovered a bunch of disorderly proteins, sometimes referred to as IDPs, intrinsically disordered proteins. Yet they also had function and seemed to work. And it made no sense at first until researchers realized that they worked by forming larger structures. As the study right here explains, they basically formed a type of a condensate. Or, as this image shows, a kind of a larger structure or a larger granule where all of these disorderly proteins would basically chunk up and that unusual chunk would then acquire its own function. And intriguingly enough, we only started calling them condensates because of the way they form. They literally condensate inside the liquid. Or, in other words, they go through a kind of a phase transition, turning into individual solid objects from previously liquid objects that they used to be before. And in these two decades, researchers discovered over 30 of these membraneless biomolecular condensates, all possessing their own structures, their own individual functions, and all forming in a kind of a similar way just naturally through the process of condensation inside the cytoplasm of a cell. But even today, they're basically entirely surrounded by mysteries. Because in most cases, we don't really understand how they work, what exactly they do, and why sometimes they appear and sometimes they disappear. But this one right here is actually super important. You can actually see that it's basically made out of proteins, RNA molecules, and even misfolded proteins, and it's what's known as a stress granule. One of these 30 structures we know about that essentially assembles into its own organelle and seems to only assemble under stress. And we don't really know exactly what it does, but we know that it seems to protect RNA in some conditions, especially when the cell is under a lot of stress. In other words, when our cells are extremely stressed, 
these unusual condensates seem to form naturally, protecting cells from additional damage. We also know that even other organelles seem to contain them as well, with for example nucleus containing several, responsible for additional functions inside nucleus itself. And we know that some of them, such as for example the Lewy bodies, have also been associated with actual physical problems. This is an example of a patient with Parkinson's. So basically, in a lot of different physical conditions, these membraneless organelles are potentially the main culprits. Which naturally suggests that there is a lot of interest in trying to understand what's happening here, but we know so little about them because this field is really in its infancy. We just know that these organelles exist, we know that they form naturally through the process of condensation, and that they don't contain membranes. And so as a result, all of them are known as biomolecular condensates. And to a lot of scientists, it was super unusual to discover that the entire process of their production is really just a kind of a phase shift. So basically kind of like water turning into ice, here we have molecules turning into solid chunks through the process of phase transformation in certain conditions. But they seem to be involved in extremely diverse processes, usually involving RNA molecules, but also involving DNA damage response and even different types of communication inside the cell. Although technically they can also form gel-like substances or even liquid crystals. And in the last 10 years, scientists have even been able to recreate this phase transition outside of the cell in a typical lab experiment. And that's essentially the first steps in trying to control this somehow and in possibly trying to discover some kind of a cure connected to some of these organelles, as I mentioned for example Parkinson's. But here's for example one image summarizing some of the functions discovered in just the last two years. A lot of these functions are basically in regards to DNA protection, some of them serve as cell signals, and some of them are responsible for stabilizing DNA during DNA transcription. In other words, there seem to be a lot of them, and they're all super important. And it's their discovery that kind of started to change our perspectives about how cells evolved, and most importantly, how early life started as well. Because in many of these cases, a lot of these organelles seem to not just contain clusters of proteins, but in most cases they also contain RNA molecules. In some cases they're actually made entirely out of these really long RNA molecules that seem to have no other function. And one of the reasons this seems to be very common is actually because, in general, a lot of RNA molecules tend to interact preferentially compared to a lot of surrounding environments. In other words, they are much more likely to bunch up and to create larger structures. And these larger structures then start to attract additional proteins, eventually forming larger organelles. But it's the fact that these organelles eventually acquire function that's of course what's really unusual and very shocking. All of them seem to have defined roles, but for some of them even their function is still super unclear. But what is clear is that, unlike other organelles, such as of course nucleus, mitochondria and lysosomes, three years ago researchers officially confirmed that bacteria have them as well. And so these exist inside prokaryotic cells as well, which every biology book before would always define as basically containing no organelles. And that only seems to be true for organelles containing membranes. Looks like at least 6% of all bacterial proteins seem to basically form these organelles as well. Here you can actually see some of them discovered in that paper in 2021. And that is a huge discovery, for one simple reason. It directly shows an evolutionary connection. And specifically because our cells contain a lot more of them, and they're also much more developed, for bacteria there is maybe 3 to 4 times less and they seem to be just a little bit simpler, with once again many of them involving RNA molecules, and many of them also responsible for controlling DNA or even for making and breaking additional RNA molecules. And that's where this directly connects to the idea of RNA world hypothesis. The idea that basically tries to explain the origin of life, starting with a typical RNA molecule, which can easily form in some kind of a primordial soup conditions, eventually forming something more complex and eventually resulting in a typical cell that would then advance to become us. But there was always that one problem. It was difficult to explain how a small RNA would basically create something larger or more importantly would survive without the protection of a membrane. In other words, it's cool that RNA can do a lot of stuff, but without being protected from the outside and specifically without a way to make lipids and to create membranes, it was basically impossible to connect all of this and to make sense of this hypothesis. And that's of course until a very recent study 
that was just released in 2024. A study by Gable Wadsworth and the team studying RNA and biomolecular condensates that made a really important discovery. RNA can spontaneously assemble into very long chains that eventually form these biomolecular condensates without the need for any lipids, any membranes, and not requiring any help from anything. In other words, here we had evidence that RNA can easily form really large structures that can eventually acquire function without the need for anything else. And that means that RNA itself, just by bunching up and by forming these condensates, could have easily created much more complex organelles that would eventually start interacting with one another and eventually, through the process of trial and error, result in something much more complex, potentially creating first protocells. Specifically highlighting how RNA can actually act as a scaffold and even regulate protein phase transition, even controlling the size, the shape, and the behavior of much larger structures or much larger droplets that were produced by this condensation, with many chains forming interconnected networks completely naturally without the use of anything else. And this of course takes us just a step closer in helping us understand how life probably started in the beginning and how it most likely started with typical RNA molecules interacting, growing larger, becoming more complex, eventually acquiring complex functions, and then at some point forming something that resembled a cell. Now obviously here there's a bit of a speculation going on, but this study provides a lot of intriguing evidence. Although naturally, it's not just about evolution of life. Understanding these complexes and trying to work out how all of this works and how this forms is also very important in helping us understand how all of this can also result in various diseases or how we can learn to manipulate these condensates for medical purposes, possibly to create new drugs or possibly to dissolve some of these complexes in conditions like Parkinson's. But like I said, because these are completely recent discoveries, we're not going to have anything practical for a very long time. Nevertheless, by understanding how this works, we can eventually find cures for things like Alzheimer's, Huntington's, Lou Gehrig's disease, and a lot of other sicknesses that seem to be associated with malfunction of these bizarre organelles. And so this is actually a ridiculously important discovery that I'm pretty certain is going to end up in a Nobel Prize. But that's when we know a little bit more about it. Right now, we're still scratching the surface, and despite this being super exciting and explaining so much about life on planet Earth, there are still so many unanswered questions. And so once we actually have some answers, we'll discuss this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.